Hey everyone, um, thanks so much for joining me for today's session, um, inspiration session for driving awareness and um, lead generation. So I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Can everyone see my screen right now? Great. Um, all right, good, good, good. So, um, so we'll just give everyone a few more minutes just to dial in and then we'll get started. So as you can see, um, I'm still working from home. Probably many of you are as well. Um, I'm actually upstate New York visiting some parents and yeah, hope everyone is having a good day. All right, so we'll dive in. So for those of you who I have not met before, I'm Renee and I'm head of customer success and enablement at Saros. And my role is to work um, to create onboarding and training materials for our customer success team, as well as partnering with other departments like our educate team to create more customer facing enablement materials as well to help develop, you know, just to drive platform adoption. Previous to this, I was director of customer success. I also worked on the other side of the fence in new business, as well as in creative strategy. So for today's session, the main goal is really to help to bring to light just some of the many ways that you can start to integrate interactive content within your team and company, as well as to help you prioritize just maybe what use cases might make sense to get started with based on your team's goals. And while today I am going to start with more of the top of funnel use cases, we'll focus there. You know, we will have a subsequent session where we're going to get a little bit more into bottom of the funnel as well as more internal comms use cases. And as always, we are recording this session that we're going to share out afterwards as well as share the deck. So with that, I will go ahead and dive right in. So, you know, the decision to start creating interactive content it really is an exciting point in time for any company, you know, because it's really an opportunity for you to start, you know, really um, pushing your creative boundaries and using that creativity to help move your business and company forward. At the same time, though, especially for those who are just taking this step for the first time, we know that it can be a little bit overwhelming in determining what opportunities for interactive are the right ones to get started with and which ones are going to make the most impact. So to start to clarify these points, you can really start this exploration in one or two ways or um, try both. And the first is just to look at your customer journey. So really mapping out what are the main touch points that your customer is going through from learning about your offerings to becoming a repeat customer. And then just thinking through about how interactive content can be made, you know, making that experience better or a little bit more efficient. You can also then look inwards into your organization itself. So really starting to understand what are different teams and departments at your company spending their most time on. And then just thinking through, well, how can interactive be, you know, make that, you know, a little bit more efficient internally or promote their activities in a more effective way. And the net result of this will be a rough map of main areas of opportunity and priority, which then you can start to align different types of content to. So for example, if you realize that awareness is where you need to spend a little bit more time on, you know, maybe your PR, marketing, corporate comms team, you know, needs a little help, you can think through creating content like infographics or event collateral. If, you know, for example, you see maybe your sales team needs a little bit more help, you can think about how you can create content like case studies, ROI calculators, or product demos as well to help them out more. So again, we're going to focus on these top two, so awareness and lead generation, um, a little bit deeper. So as we zoom into awareness and lead generation, you know, there are a number of different ways that we can achieve those main goals of acquainting prospects with your company and offerings and keeping yourself top of mind until they're ready to engage with you to learn more. And the ones that I'm showing here, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, there's so many different types of, you know, content use cases and formats within these two. 
So I just chose these because it, they see, you know, this is what we see most popular with our customers and what resonates best. So I'm just gonna dive into a few of my favorites, but feel free to put in the chat if you're working on anything in particular, you know, and anything that you might want to see. So I'm gonna start here with thought leadership and thought leadership is really kind of a bread and butter type of use case we see at Saros because it really is kind of a catch all term for lots of different types of content, whether it's infographics, data visualization, proprietary research and analysis and more. But it's really effective in that it helps to showcase your expertise in a particular subject area. And it helps to subtly communicate that you are the best person to work with to solve a particular obstacle or capitalize on an opportunity. So the example that we see here, it's actually um, one of my favorite customer stories around thought leadership. And this particular customer, they work within the consulting space and they've been with Saros for over four years. And like many of us, even though they are a big company and they partner with enterprise clients, they actually have a very small lean internal team. So they had an inter um, a goal to build brand awareness and ultimately wanted to build their inbound pipeline but they knew that this would be a long-term effort and would go beyond just launching one or two interactive reports. You know, they would really have to think about this in an ongoing series way. So they, they knew that they also needed to balance that with the reality of their small team. So what was really great is that they went through some planning exercises to really determine, you know, what experiences weren't warranted like a full-blown standalone immersive experience like what we see here, where it's actually more of a microsite where you can click into different sections. And then what was maybe more appropriate to express through smaller embedded modules, which we see here, where this actually sits within a CMS article on their site. And then they even went a third step with from what the content they were creating, really starting to think through, well, from these, what can we turn into templates and reuse? So if you actually look at all of the content they're creating now, you'll see that they actually repeat these same kind of formats in other areas as well, just to, for, again, further drive those efficiencies. And for them, you know, because of, they've been really smart in how they approach creating content, they've been able to consistently scale their output year over year without drastically increasing the size of their team. So next, I'm going to move into brand stories, which I think is usually a use case that is sometimes overlooked and underrated, just because it's a little bit more evergreen in nature. It's not as kind of time bound and campaign based. However, I really like brand stories because it, they do let you take a little bit more of an editorial approach. Sometimes you can get a little bit more out of the box in terms of the design and creative with it, especially if you have more stringent brand guidelines. But this type of content is most effective, you know, in when you want to really communicate what your company cares about beyond business and connect with your audience in a more emotional level, which we are seeing is increasingly carrying weight with customers. So the example I wanted to show here is from a customer who has been with Saros for over five years now, and they sit within the travel space. And while they use interactive content in a number of various ways across their entire business, one of their main goals was to increase and improve their brand's perception through finding just interesting ways to highlight their core values and their employees. So they launched a full evergreen campaign called Connections Matter, which includes video, written content, social media, and more, with Saros acting as the hub to showcase all of these stories about how their employees go above and beyond to build connections with their customers. So whether it was to deliver a holiday miracle to get a family home in time for Christmas, or helping to find an engagement ring that was lost in transit. And for this customer, um, you know, the rollout was so successful that they continue to update this hub with new stories as well, you know, years after they originally launched this campaign. As we move down the funnel more towards lead generation, I wanted to then focus on quizzes and assessments which is always a fan favorite, you know, both with our customers as well as internally at Saros, you know, because it, 
they really are interactive in the truest sense in that they're actively asking for input and guidance from your audience. You know, they're the ones who are telling you what they need or want, not the other way around. And um, the added benefit is that you can also gather valuable data about your audience for further segmented outreach and follow up, you know, especially if you're taking advantage of other features like, you know, integrated form fills and things like that. So the example I wanted to highlight here comes from a customer who is um, sits in the architecture engineering space and they've been with us since 2018 so going on three years now. And when they originally came to us, you know, they were struggling with the challenge that a lot of their products and services are very dry and complex. I'm sure many of you, even in different industries, can probably relate with that as well. And their director of content marketing, he really wanted to see if interactive content could help them distill their information and visualize it in just a more appealing and digestible way. So when they were launching a new offering, they decided that rather than just presenting a lot of text on a page, they could really present the information through a quiz format. So they're asking questions from users about their project and then educating them on if this new offering would be the right fit for them or not and why. And at the end, they had all results flow into a lead capture form for appropriate follow-up. So um, beyond this quiz, you know, and just <laughs> with this quiz as well, you know, they have been quite successful in some of the results that they're seeing. So they actually have found that over the years on average, they see that interactive content is outperforming their static content on an average of two to one. You know, and that was just really exciting for us to hear, you know, because it, we really do believe in the power of creativity and that really helped just go to show that, you know, design and user experience really does make a difference. So I'm going to finish off here with looking more at ABM or account based marketing, just as this is, um, again, a use case that we're seeing um, more of an uptick in. And we're seeing our customers do account-based marketing through either creating fully bespoke experiences for one high value target account or with others just creating more vertical specific industry pages. And then they're you know, promoting them through tactics like page campaigns or SEO strategies. And I know that it can kind of seem like a lot in terms of resources if you're going to be creating a lot of these experiences. But I do wanna say that they really are scalable so once you design the overall structure, it's really straightforward to update the content itself. And it's also just worth keeping in mind that these are typically higher performing. You know, the more relevant that you're making something for someone, the more likely they are to engage with it. So it can help, you know, justify maybe some of the extra time that you would be spending overall. So the story that I wanted to highlight here comes from a customer who is in the B2B and fintech space, and they've been a client since 2019. And their CMO had originally approached us as they were looking for ways to elevate their brand to help them target and appeal to larger enterprise companies. So it was really a new market that they were trying to break into. And they felt that one of the ways that they could really achieve that was through creating just more visually engaging verticalized landing pages. So including things like industry specific imagery, logos, product benefits, testimonials, and more. So the examples that we see here are landing pages that they created. So you can kind of see that they are similar structure, but they were just switching out some of the imagery, that video that they used up at the top some of you know the the words the logos as well and well this is just two examples of what they created they actually did this over i think over 10 of their verticals in total and based on um, the engagement that they saw they've actually recently signed on for an extension to their contract just so they can continue to invest in experiences like these just because they did perform so well for them as well as you know, start to experiment with other formats as well to see if that could work for them too. So I will again share this deck out so you can explore some of the other use cases as well. So as we start to wrap up, you know, there were a few parting thoughts that I just wanted to share with everyone. And the first is really, you know, just on the importance of defining goals. 
So being very deliberate and intentional about, you know, laying out what are your goals, you know, what are you trying to solve for, and then choosing the most appropriate solution to solve that. You know, sometimes we see um, people who will start off with a particular use case, you know, wanting to do an infographic or a quiz, but that doesn't really meet what they're trying to solve for. So starting first with goals. The second is just to be realistic with your resources, both in terms of, you know, what may be creative or, um, or content talent you might have on hand, their skill levels, as well as just overall timelines that you might be, you know, be given for a particular, um, you know, project. So, for example, as we saw with thought leadership, there's so many different ways that you can get there. You can do a full-blown microsite. You can also do smaller embedded modules. You know, both are highly effective and they have their own benefit, you know, set of benefits. And the last is just to think long term, especially for those who are new to interactive. You know, you don't need to boil the ocean, you know, to start, you know, start small and then kind of set different milestones for your team just to build up in terms of maybe the amount of content that you're producing or the complexity of what you're um, producing. You know, with anything, the more, you know, that you practice in the tool, the more that you use it, the faster you get. And also, you know, the more content you're creating, the more opportunities you have to start to build out your own templates and be able to reuse modules as well that can help just again, make you a bit faster. So with that, I do thank everyone for joining me today. And if there's any questions, uh, we can go through, go through those now. Okay, so we do have a few questions here. And the first question is, do you mind elaborating a little bit more on digital events? And I can. So yes, yeah, so we did have events there as um, one of the, the use cases. And as everyone can imagine, that's been um, very popular this year, especially as a lot of companies had to shift to a more virtual format rather than in person. So with events, you know, um, we are seeing our customers really using interactive content at various different touch points. So the first, you know, before the event, they're creating content like interactive invites or social media campaigns just to drive awareness around the event and excitement for that. Then at the event itself, you know, doing things like creating you know, microsites where they're actually experimenting with live streaming different examples or live streaming video through the microsite itself, or, you know, when um, events are actually in person using it on touchscreen kiosks. And then lastly, for post events, we're seeing a lot of things like um, event recaps as well. And I do want to mention that one of my colleagues um, from the pros team, she's actually going to be hosting an event or a webinar, I believe in two weeks, I can send the link to that, um, where she's going to be doing a deeper dive uh, with events. So if you are actually actively planning for one now, highly recommend you to sign up for that. So the next question is, how do I scale my own content? And that's a really great question. And there's a few, I guess, ways that you can think through scaling your own content. But I think the biggest thing that we do see is just through using templates. So whether you're logging on to Saros Inspire and you know, finding templates that we've provided and pulling for those, I mean, that definitely can help with getting started. Or you can also start to develop your own templates as well. So going back to how um, you know, we saw in the thought leadership example, that little circle you know, chart that I saw, you know, that particular client, they've, um, you know, reused that numerous times as well. So you start to be able to build up your own catalog of experiences that you can just start to pull from and you just get faster in that way. Um, and then also just using the tool more, you'll pick up more kind of tips and tricks. So we actually have some features, you know, the built in the studio, um, like hotkeys that you can just start to learn, you know, things like object states makes you faster and more efficient too. Um, we also have a question, are there any examples of how people are using Saros for product demos? And yes, we do. So I'm just gonna actually pull up 
Saros Inspire, um, which is a great site. So hopefully everyone on this call has visited Saros Inspire before. Um, but if not, this is a repository that we have where we feature um, bested class examples you know, from um, our team as well as for our customers. You can actually go through to see how other people have been using um, you know, the tool themselves. And you can actually start to search, you know, how, you know, for different types of examples. So in the example for how people are using it for product demos, we do have a few, which I can actually follow up with later, but we do see a lot of things like product walkthroughs. So where they actually, you know, are taking like videos or, or screenshots of a product itself, and then actually overlaying that with information so it kind of contextualizes the different features or you're able to walk through it, you know, as well. So we have one client who does this for all their product demos. So it's actually something that they can send to clients, you know, before a sales call. And it's actually like a full walkthrough. So then once they actually get on that call with the salesperson, the salesperson is having just more of a strategic conversation or a follow-up to the features that they might be interested in um, as well. So hopefully that answers that. Um, and looks like we have a few more. Uh, so one of the questions was, what distribution channels did other companies find helpful to distribute quizzes versus something like a brand story or a landing page? Um, so the, the example with the quizzes that we saw, um, you know, since they're much more, I guess, lead generation focused and they are more to be B2B, you know, we were, we've been seeing that distribution be more through, um, you know, first living on their website itself. So if prospects are coming in and looking at, let's say like their product page of all their offerings, they can actually, you know, they're, they're featuring the quiz there for people to take as well as um, we do see a lot of email distribution as well. So, you know, if you want to just target, you know, some, um, you know, prospects or something like that, you know, just sending an email out that way. So I think those are the more the popular ways we're seeing the B2B quizzes being sent out. So targeted email campaigns or featured on the site itself. Whereas to your point, you know, the brand stories, like we saw with the travel client, that was much more promoted through things like social media. Also, you know, we do have the ability where you can um, embed Saros experiences within social channels, like do a swipe up. So we also see that more popular with brand stories as well. And the last question we'll get to um, is which content type is more commonly requested? And um, are there industries that's adopting interactive more than others? Two very good questions. Um, and I would say, I mean, that's a very hard question because it definitely things definitely go in waves. I would say this year in particular, just because of COVID and what we saw there with the impact on the events industry, we've definitely seen the biggest growth um, for interactive content in events because if people couldn't, um, you know, obviously go in person. So they had to find ways how to kind of recreate that experience, you know, that in life experience um, you know, virtual format. So I definitely see that being the most. I think the second main area that we've seen um, the biggest is more within sales enablement materials. So also for, you know, companies who are, you know, pitching. So for example, we work with construction companies who have huge pitches and they were very used to kind of pitching in person, you know, a very large RFP process because they couldn't do that in person anymore. And, you know, their contract values were so high, they were turning to things like interactive as well. So how they could kind of recreate that pitch process, you know, in a virtual, you know, digital format. So I think, you know, sales enablement is really the second largest as well. And then the, the most consistent though use case, I would say is more thought leadership. So like the data visualization infographics as well, that's always kind of a steady, um, reliable use case. And as for the industry that's adopting the most, I mean, 
I would say, you know, we do work with all types of clients. We have, of course, a number who are within, you know, B2B, you know, the tech companies were always kind of more of the early adopters as well, you know, with using interactive, but we are starting to see more of a growth again within those industries that were hit harder by COVID. So a lot more of those professional services companies has been growing as well as, you know, what we're seeing, you know, we work with a number of healthcare. So all over the place. Um, so it looks like that's it for questions. So hopefully I was able to get everyone. And of course, you know, if not, um, you know, feel free to email me. I'm also, you know, always happy to give any advice that way. And um, I will also say that we do um, have our Cero Slack community that we just launched. So we're also always available there. Members of our pro services team are also in that community. So um, we can, um, send over more information or you can, you know, um, connect with us there as well. So thanks so much, everyone. I really, again, appreciate your time and looking forward to, I guess, hopefully meeting all of you in person someday. Bye.